What's up guys, how's it going? Tifty here and today we have another Sentry Spot guide for you and we're looking at Swiftwater. Now apologies it's been a little while since we've done one of these. Basically I wanted to do Swiftwater next. A lot of you guys have requested that but I hadn't played it an awful lot so I basically wanted to get in there, try out some positions before I actually go ahead and share that with you guys. Before we jump in just two or three things to mention. Firstly as always this is just a few of the positions I like to use. Feel free to try them out, build upon them, be inspired by them but please don't feel like this is a definitive guide by any means. Secondly, I break these maps down into different sections and it's not always a case of being able to build at each of those sections, it depends entirely on the flow of the game. Finally, just a really quick mention about the independent engineer versus a more team orientated engineer. So this is all coming from the perspective of someone who's playing on their own in a casual server and so some of these ideas might not apply so well to someone who plays within a well put together team in perhaps competitive TF2. For example, if you've got your pocket covering a particular choke, maybe you can focus your sentry on another choke. And very quickly, just to finish off, a thank you to Not Putis who gave me about a million items. I uh, really appreciate that. I put them on the screen here. There's so many I can't possibly list them all out. So thank you, and let's jump straight in to the map. So sometimes I like to show the map in its entirety, but because this is so big, I'm actually gonna, for the sake of time, jump straight into the first area. The enemy team will be spawning in and coming at you from these two positions here. Now, first of all, a couple of spots that I tried that I thought might have had potential, but really didn't work for me. So the first one was in this corner here. You get a little health pack in this corner, and I think you get a bit of metal too, but it's just far too aggressive. As soon as they're onto you, they're just gonna completely mulch you. So that one really didn't work out for me. Another one I tried was actually inside this kind of hut here. I thought that could provide some nice shelter but in reality you're not really supporting your team from in there and by the time the blue team has, have actually pushed up across the bridge and up this hill they can just completely swamp you and you're kind of on your own. So the first one that is a really good solid place to build is right smack bang kind of in the middle of this area here. This gives good support for your team. The only real place you need to look out for is in the roof on the top left there and that kind of goes for most of these spots. The second spot I'm going to show you is on top of this area here next to the hut. The way I would describe this is it's slightly more risky, kind of more in the open here. You're drawing a lot more attention to yourself, but it's slightly more fun. I find it good fun. I like a little bit of a challenge, something a little bit different. You've got a great field of view, but again, there's going to be some spots in the distance that can still get to you, which I'll kind of cover in just a sec. So the third spot I like to use in this first area is just behind this hut here, just kind of peeking out this little area. Now you can build inside this hut too, looking out the window. My preference is here. I've got more space to kind of run around. It covers behind you better, I think, as well. But yeah, this can be a nice alternative to the middle area to the right. So let's jump straight into the gameplay now. Okay, so the first thing I do is I shove my dispenser and teleport up against that fence. Makes sense, you know, the dispenser's there to support your team, your mates can tell you in and they kind of know exactly where they are if they appear there. Now as for the sentry gun, I started off kind of just plonking it down in the middle, but the more I tried this spot out, I found just slightly further to the right better, so you get more cover from those long range sight lines to the left and, you know, on top of that building to the left there. What I find useful is having the sentry gun cover your end of the log bridge to the left there. Um, this kind of forces them to have to take the low ground and go through the kind of sewage area and therefore they're kind of vulnerable as they flank ground at least. So yeah, I think this is probably the most kind of solid and safe place to build behind this fence. But let's take a look at some other options. Okay, so this second position is just behind the one we looked at and it's on this kind of raised area here. I like to put my dispenser just kind of underneath me if you like here. Now the problem with that is it's not really sharing it with your team so uh, you might want to build it a little bit more in the open. But yeah, this sentry gun, I like to put right to the left of this ledge. You can kind of use that tree as cover from the log bridge um, and that sight line. As you can see, as the enemy push the car up the slope there, it's got range down onto them so it can take them out quite nicely. But yeah, your main vulnerability is going to be snipers or soldiers really and I think in this particular game a couple of soldiers are kind of onto me and they start attacking me at once and yeah. If you are taken down like this, um, you can just sort of build your sentry gun a little bit further back just whilst you're getting it built back up and that can be really useful. Okay, so the third position is just to the left here. Now, like I said, you do see a lot of engineers actually building inside here with their sentry gun looking out that window. I've had my sentry gun sap through that window before, and I also find it easy as a demo man to kind of spam stickies through there once you've figured out there's a sentry gun there. So I prefer building just outside here, looking down this kind of gap. 
In this example here, I actually build my sentry gun a little bit further back than I would normally. I think I end up actually moving it slightly further forward here, so as the team push that car across the bridge, the sentry gun can sort of reach them comfortably. Before we look at the next open area, we're going to take a quick look at this indoor area here. This can be a really nice choke point. Although there is a flank round the side, a lot of people don't really use it and most of the team will try and come in this way. The first one is kind of in this left corner here. Pretty straightforward really, you kind of need to look out for any sneaky sight lines the enemy has onto you. But other than that, it's pretty much a matter of just shoving it roughly in the corner. The second one is a little bit further back and it's just by this pillar here. To be honest, the first one's probably preferable, but it's kind of a fun alternative I like to use, and it also gives you a little bit longer to set up. So yeah, as I said, pretty straightforward. I'm putting the sentry gun down there right in the corner so you can't really see it from outside of the doorway. I find putting the dispenser to my left useful, so if they're really doing a bit of a push, you can tuck yourself away in this corner if you need to. As you can see here, they're kind of trying to edge forward, and as long as your team are grouped up here, this can be like a really tough hold. So yeah, I actually ended up moving my sentry gun a little bit to the left there just because the enemy team had a little bit of a sightline onto it and weren't able to shoot rockets at it. But yeah, now it's around the corner that little bit more. This makes it even harder to get and they really have to commit themselves to the push before they can take it out. So yeah, this is the second position and I tend to build it just next to this pillar thing here with equal prominence to each direction. So wherever the threat's coming from, it can very quickly lock onto the enemy. Again, just putting the dispenser and the telly behind me somewhere, anyone going the route of the cart to the right, it takes care of them quite nicely. It's one of those spots that it seems perfect on paper, but in reality, it depends entirely on how the game's going. You know, definitely worth a try. Okay, so let's take a look at this second open area. The majority of them will be coming through the middle here. I think the majority of the experienced players will probably try and come in the top route. It gives you the high ground and it's often not very well defended. So you see an awful lot of engineers building just above this tunnel here. Now, I don't personally like building here. It means you're completely open to the other side of the map. You also sometimes see people building in this corner here. And for the same reasons, I personally don't like building here either. So there's a couple of spots here that I think have quite a lot of potential and like I said, I'm pretty sure there are probably hundreds I haven't covered in this so I'd love to hear your guys' feedback. But the first one is actually right smack bang in the middle on top of this platform here. It really does cover every route through. The hardest part is getting set up in time but once you are set up it can be really strong. The second one is kind of in a similar position but it's just further to the right, maybe giving a little bit more prominence to the flank at the top here. But yeah, let's take a look and see how these guys perform. Okay, so I'm whacking my sentry gun down pretty much right in the middle there. I find putting my telly just behind this little corner here kind of cool because it's a little bit out of the way. And then dropping down to grab that big metal pack there. And with NG, I always find that the first push you have to resist is going to be the hardest because the first one is when the enemy are clumped together. And it's kind of what we see here. There's a bunch of heavies. They're all on the car. They're pushing through. It's going to be kind of make or break. Luckily, we just about managed to survive using the Wrangler to kind of put out a little bit extra damage. And so what you'll find is that the enemy will tend to trickle in from this point forward. As you can see, I'm getting loads of pressure from the right here. The best way to deal with that is actually to use your shotgun, put pressure back onto them, make sure they don't get any real time to sort of really think about what they're doing. But yeah, I find this position an awful lot of fun. It's pretty hectic. You're covering a lot of directions. You're having to do a lot of work. But yeah, good fun. It's just a matter of getting set up well in advance. And yeah, definitely worth a try. So yeah, this second position I mentioned, very similar to the first. You pretty much have to act in the same way in terms of covering this right flank with your shotgun. You're a little bit closer to the metal pack below and the only difference really is they can probably stand in some positions in that tunnel to the left and probably are out of range of your sentry but I find that most people get pressured quite heavily as they come out of that tunnel anyway. One of the most prominent tactics I use as an engineer is basically combining the damage of my shotgun with the damage of my sentry gun for that kind of burst damage. I find that kind of works really well. But yeah, in terms of these two positions, both work reasonably well and it's you know worth trying them both out and basically just seeing what suits you better. The enemy can come from all sorts of directions in this area here. There are some great little shortcuts you can take if you're aware of them, which kind of lead out to this right flank, left flank if you're on the offensive team. So you really have to be aware of these guys. The first one I wanted to mention real quick was underneath this kind of surface here. You see a lot of people building here. It can work really well, but it kind of cramps my style. I feel a little bit claustrophobic in there, if you like. So it's not one I'm going to talk about today. 
One of the spots that's a little unusual I wanted to briefly mention was kind of on top of this area here. This isn't an absolutely ideal spot, but I do find it really useful for getting your sentry gun set up. So if the enemy are pushing very quickly, being a little bit hidden away in this corner here gives you a chance to get set up more undisturbed. One of the strongest positions I think is probably on top of this rooftop here. This covers pretty much the entire area, including all these sneaky little flank routes. One other thing you can do, and it's not massively practical, you can actually do a sentry jump up to one of these positions on the right. But yeah, I mean, it's not very practical if they're pushing quite quickly. It's a bit too fiddly to try and get set up on that side. But yeah, it can be like definitely a lot of fun to try out. So yeah, this is the first spot I mentioned. It covers anyone coming out of that left door and it also just about reaches up to that ledge to the right. So it's pretty secure. And like I said, you probably wouldn't want to keep your sentry gun here the whole time. I find it useful at least. Just gives you that extra bit of time to get set up. Once you are, you can kind of move it into a, a more favorable position. For me, I think this is probably the strongest spot in this area. The sentry gun just goes in the corner there and this position shoots down really nicely onto the cart two ledges opposite that's where you're going to get probably some soldiers poking their heads around there and the tricky thing is they've got quite a lot of cover over there in this particular clip suddenly there's just thousands of enemies in that little um, doorway there and I tried to wrangle them but I got absolutely mulched so that was kind of unfortunate and yeah like I said you can actually jump over to these ledges I like to build on this ledge here a lot of fun building here normally it's not very practical like I said another nice little uh, sneaky trick is you can get your telly on top of this roof here and then uh, maybe teleport your teammates in uh, behind the enemy a bit later. Who knows? Whatever you fancy. So this last open area is an interesting one. You'd think there'd be thousands of great spots to use, but for me, I've only really found one decent one, and that is behind this barrier here. You're pretty well covered. You can build a dispenser, support your team. It covers the route of the car as it goes up and around that corner at the top. The second one I'm gonna briefly talk about is inside this building here. Now, so, I've been trying to make this work for a little while now, and it's, it's really not, to be honest with you. I felt like this should be a pretty cool spot, but I've never had any success with it. Normally because by the time they get to this corner, they are just full steam ahead. There's just a massive group of them. They flood into that building and they absolutely demolish me. But I'll show you a couple of clips in a second anyway. Some of the other spots I thought could be interesting I've just shown on the screen here. For various reasons I've kind of written them off. Most of them are just too vulnerable, too out in the open. Again, I would love to know if any of these spots or any other spots around here work for you guys. Cool, so yeah, this first spot just behind this little barrier here. This was a really fun game actually. It's always most enjoyable when you're fighting on the edge of your comfort zone, if you like. So yeah, I'm trying to constantly distract the enemy, put a bit of pressure onto them, divert their attention away from my sentry gun. The Spencer is just against that kind of wall there. It looks like in this particular game, they do actually push around all the way to that point actually, which um, maybe they hid behind the cart, because normally I think it is within range, but we managed to hold for quite a while considering they were rolling us. So yeah, I think for me, it's definitely the strongest position within this area. Yeah, definitely a lot of fun to try out. So yeah, the second one, I won't spend too long on this. The one I really wanted to make work was in this window here. I also tried further back, but this is the one I really kind of focused on. And like I said, didn't have any luck with it at all. It should totally work, right? It's, you know, shoots them as they go around the corner from behind. You can sort of teleport your mates in. Just so much kind of cool stuff could happen, right? Oh, forget it. So before we jump into the final area of the map, I wanted to briefly mention this room down here. It's not one I personally prefer using. It feels a little bit segregated from your team. So if they are pushing down this hill, unless you have a lot of your team with you, they're probably gonna be able to kind of use the cart for cover and take you out quite easily. So this is the last area. You have a couple of flank routes to kind of keep an eye on. So my absolute favorite spot to build is just on top of this ledge here because it covers every single window, got higher ground. So whereas if you're set up in the middle, people can spam down rockets and stickies from the windows. But if you're on this ledge here, they have to be a little bit more accurate. You're a little bit further out of the way. So it can be a bit harder for them to take you out. The second spot is just kind of on the edge of this drop where the cart will be coming through. Now, pretty much anywhere around the edge of this hole is gonna be decent. 
The reason I'm mentioning this spot here in particular is because I find it really useful if you're kind of in dire straits and you just need to get a sentry gun up really quickly. As I've discussed before, it gives you a chance to set up a little bit out of the way. And once you're comfortable and you're set up to level three or what have you, you can then move it out to a more favorable position. For me, that would be kind of a little bit further back. So it's got a bit of a better longer range sight line down onto the cart. So yeah, this is the first position, just putting it right on this corner here, putting the dispenser somewhere behind me. You can actually use the dispenser to try and slow down spies and block the doorway behind you. I'm not too bothered about that. Sometimes I want to jump down and get some metal and come back up quickly, so it kind of freaks me out if my dispenser's in the way. As you can see, there are people sort of running past these windows at the top. If they're quick, they don't really take a lot of damage. As soon as you see one, you really have to get on top of it. Use your Wrangler or your shotgun, or you know, if you're playing with a team, call them out. It really is just a matter of making sure that soldiers or demo men don't get a decent chance to peek out those windows and take out your base. This last spot, even though it's a little bit further forward, this is kind of more my last resort spot because you can get set up a lot quicker. You've got metal in this room here. You've got a large metal pack just behind you as well. I put it in this corner. It's a little bit out of the way. And then once you're a little bit happier, you can sort of move it back. As you can see here, you know, by moving it back, it can shoot right down onto the cart and it pressures the enemy, you know, a lot sooner. So they're not too comfortable as they push the cart forward. If you prefer, you could use the corner the whole time. I mean, it does a pretty decent job. It just means that they're able to push almost to the very end before your sentry gun's going to do any damage onto them. So I find it a bit risky. But yeah, pretty much anywhere around this gap can be good. So yeah, I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are and where you guys like to build on this last point. One final little position to mention is actually up in these corridors here. Now, it's a bit of a risky one. I think it just about protects the objective, but it also covers um, this indoor area and all the flanks you normally have to worry about. So it's a nice secondary support sentry for those other sentries that are positioned outside in the normal spots. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode, that's quite a long one today, sorry about that, went on a bit. Let me know if I missed any awesome spots and let me know what map you want to see me do next. Thank you for watching, thanks for 5,000 subscribers and we're already like steaming on ahead to 6,000, it's mental. So um, thanks very much and I'll see you guys in the next video.